Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. Good morning. This morning, I'm going to be reading from the book of Acts, and I'm going to be reading chapter 16, and I'll be reading verses 6 through 10, but I'm not going to read that right yet. If you will, if you have your Bible, put your finger right there, and I'll be to it in a minute. Pray with me. Jesus, this day is your day. Set aside a time and a place for you. Lord, give us ears that hear, and bodies that respond to you. Thank you for this time. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. The church I grew up in, we had a, a legend. It wasn't a written legend. It wasn't a spoken legend. It was a living legend. Her name was Ms. B. Dietrich. She was my fifth grade Sunday school teacher. She wasn't just my fifth grade Sunday school teacher. My sis sister, who's four years older than I am, she was her fifth grade Sunday school teacher. And my brother, who's seven years older than I am, she was his fifth grade Sunday school teacher. If my parents had lived in that church when they were growing up, she would have been their fifth grade Sunday school teacher. If Moses had lived in that church, she would have been his fifth grade Sunday school teacher. She referred to John the Baptist as Jack. She had been around just that long. <laughs> she remembers the Dead Sea when it was only a little bit sick. She had been around for a long, long time. So I knew exactly what my mother meant when she said, Miss B's yard needs raking. What she meant was get off the sofa, grab a rake and go to Miss B's yard and rake it. She didn't have to say all that. She said, Miss B's yard needs raking. So I grabbed my rake. I went to Miss B's house and I estimate about 80% of the leaves that fell in Georgia that year fell in Miss B's yard. Oh, it was, and she wanted them bagged. She didn't want them just raked up and, you know, back to the woods. No, she wanted them bagged. And it, it, it wasn't the, the water oak or the pin oak where you just sweep it one time and they come up in beautiful piles and they're easy. No, sweet gum. And every time that I came across the rake, I'd have to clean out the tines of the rake. Rake and bag and rake and bag and rake and bag. I finished last week and I just thought I would let you know. It was, whoa, it lasted one day longer than forever. I, every day I was going over there raking and bagging and raking and bagging. And every afternoon she would come out with a little plate of butter cookies and <laughs> and Coca-Cola she had she had poured in a little Dixie cup and we would sit on the porch and, and talk. Well, when I was just about finished with the yard a week ago, that <laughs> she gave me a little book and the little book she gave me was if you don't know where you're going, you'll end up somewhere else. I like that title. I th that appeals to me. I, I assume it appeals to you. We like that idea of, of having a sense of direction, having a sense of being centered, having a plan. If you plan your work and work your plan and you know where you're going, that that's where you'll wind up. Of 
our American culture, one of the things I like best is that can-do spirit. That if you know where you're going, if you're focused, if you have a, 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 a center, if you have a sense of direction, then, then that's where you'll wind up. I like that. For the longest time, I, that, that was a, a, a great source of strength. And years later, I ran across Acts chapter 16. Starting at verse 6, this is what it says. It says, and they. Well, who in the world is they? Well, that's Paul and Silas. That um, Paul... And Barnabas were traveling together, but Barnabas wanted to travel with John Mark. He wanted them to, uh, John Mark to accompany them. Well, John Mark had already abandoned them once, and, and Paul didn't want any part of that. He didn't want to lean on somebody who might abandon them at the last minute. So Paul and Barnabas got crossways with each other, and they decided to, to split up. And, and Paul and Silas decided to go one direction and and John, Mark, and Barnabas went another. So the they that's being spoken of here, this is Paul and Silas. And this is what it says. And they, Paul and Silas, passed through the Phrygian and Galatian region. And having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. And when they had come to Mysia, they were trying to go into Bithynia. And the Spirit of Jesus did not permit them. And passing by Mysia, they came down to Troas. Is this your favorite verse in the Bible? <laughs> is, is there something about Phrygia that just warms your heart? Is there something about, when I talked about Bithynia, did you go, you know, I just get a sense of a spiritual fulfillment when he talks about Mysia and Bithynia. And Chances are pretty good that even if you read this, you really didn't know it was here. I, at least that's the way it was for me for the longest time. And I think the reason is, is because none of the names of these places mean anything to us. They aren't called the same thing nowadays. Phrygia is what we now call Turkey. Well, now maybe it means a little bit more to you. And they wanted to go into to Bithynia. Well, Bithynia was a, the richest province in all of Asia. Everyone in the ancient world, I mean Everyone knew where this was. Bithynia includes what would later become Constantinople and would later become Istanbul. It was the major import-export route throughout all of Asia. And Paul knew exactly what he was doing. He was focused. He was centered. He had a sense of direction. And he had the eye of a strategist. He knew that if he planted the gospel right there in Bithynia, in the richest province of all of Asia, that when, when people came in to do import and export business, when they were there to, 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 to buy and to sell, when their lives were transformed by Jesus Christ, they would carry the gospel back home with them. And to plant the gospel in Bithynia would mean to plant the gospel in the whole of the world because that's where the world came. The world would, would come and, and then they would go back home. And, and Paul had a, a wonderful eye of a strategist. He knew exactly where to plant the gospel. But instead of winding up in Bithynia, it says here he wound up in Troas. Well, I was trying to think, what would be a good parallel of having your, your, your heart set on Bithynia but winding up in Troas instead? I got to thinking, imagine for a minute that your favorite radio station is having a contest. And in this contest, they're taking, sometime during the week, they're going to announce the 10th caller who calls in and answers the questions correctly gets an all-expense-paid trip for them and 10 of their friends to Cancun, Mexico. And you've always wanted to go to Cancun. It's your favorite radio station. You'd probably be listening to it anyway, but for this week, you're listening to it all day, every day. And then they make the announcement. We'll take the 10th caller who can answer the question correctly. You call, And guess what? You're the 10th caller. And here's the question. What's the name of the horse in the movie Seabiscuit? Well, 
you happen to know the answer. It's Seabiscuit. And so you say Seabiscuit and the alarms go off and you and 10 of your friends have won an all expense paid trip to Cancun, Mexico. There's going to be sun. There's going to be sand. There's going to be swimming with the dolphins. You all are going to have a blast. You know you are and, and you win the trip. The day has come for you and 10 of your friends. They're at your house and a limo pulls up. And it's going to take you to the airport so you can go to Cancun. And all of your friends, you all have been reminiscing about how, what it's going to be like to be together. This is going to make a, memories that will last forever. You're in, there in the, in the limo. You knock on the, 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 the limo driver's window and he lowers the window and he said, May I help you, sir? And you say, take us to Cancun. And all your friends let out this cheer, knowing that he's going to drive you to the airport and you're going to fly to Cancun and it's going to be great. So the, the window rolls back up and you all are talking about swimming with the dolphins and what it'll be like in the sun and how beautiful the water will be. That You've seen pictures of it and everything's paid for. You've been in the limo for about an hour and you look out the window and you realize, well, this doesn't look anything like the airport. I mean... Nobody's cut us off in traffic. This can't be the airport. And, and so you're, you're looking around and you're trying to figure out what's going on. And so you knock on the limo driver's window again. And he lowers the window and he says, yes, sir, how may I help you? And you say, well, this doesn't look like the airport. I said, take us to Cancun. And he said, Cancun, oh, I thought you said Calhoun. <laughs> now, if... If you're from Calhoun, I know that there's people watching today. They're from Calhoun, and it's a wonderful place. Of all the places in the world, it's one of them. And it's a great place to be from. And you're one of the things that makes Calhoun so wonderful. But if you have your heart set on Cancun, Calhoun won't do. No one ever went swimming with the dolphins in Calhoun. No one ever talks about the sun and the beaches and the beautiful water there in Calhoun. Calhoun. That's Troas. If you had your heart set on Bithynia and you wound up in Troas, you were, if you look at a map, you're at the end of Asia. There's no place to go except back where you came from or the water. I, the, you, you can look at the sea and that's about it. It is where the, the road ends is Troas. And if you want to go one step further, you're going to wind up wet or you're going to have to get in a boat and go to some place that you can't even see. He was at the place that he hoped not to be, the place that he planned not to be, the place that he never expected to be. He wound up somewhere else. He was focused, he was centered, he was directed. He, had, he knew what he wanted, but he still wound up someplace else. And now here, hear the good news. Acts chapter 16, and I'm going to start again at, at verse 8. In passing by Mysia, they came down to Troas. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A certain man of Macedonia was standing and appealing to him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. And when he had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go into Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. It was here in Macedonia that Paul made the first convert to Jesus Christ in all of Europe. That it was here that Paul started the church in Philippi, to which later he would write a letter that is, is maybe one of the most beautiful letters in the whole of the Bible. It's here that he started the church in Thessalonica. It was from here that he started a church in Athens, a church in Corinth. It was here that the gospel went and spread to the whole of the world. It was here that the gospel spread all over Europe. That it's even in that place that he didn't expect to go, that place he never wanted to go, that place he planned not to go, that, that God is faithful. It was here in Troas. It was here in Troas. And Troas, well, it's not just a place on the map. It's not just somewhere else. 
The Troas has different names. Sometimes it's called defeat, where you can't see any other way, that it's the end of the road. Or some people call it rock bottom. That, that place that you never wanted to be, never expected to be, and never hoped to be. Sometimes it's called defeat, and sometimes it's called a layoff. Sometimes it's called sickness. Sometimes it's called divorce. And sometimes it's called death. Hear the good news. God is faithful. God is faithful. Not sometimes, but always. God is faithful. That it was on the cross. Jesus gave his life to destroy and defeat all those things that would conquer and defeat us. Some of those things are things that we've done, and some of those things are things that were done to us. But it doesn't make any difference because Jesus defeated them on the cross. And what he gave in its place is forgiveness for all that is past, all that is present, and all that would be. And then he didn't just say, fend for yourself from now on. I've done my part. No, what he did was he rose from the grave. And when he rose, he rose to, to live his life through you. That his spirit is alive now today. And when you invite him to make his home in your heart, he lives in and through you. To give you power, to give you help that you and I don't have. Because God is faithful not once long ago, but he is faithful today, living through your life. This morning, it may be that you're somewhere else. You are that place that you never planned to be. You are in that place that you never hoped to be. You're in that place that you never expected to be. Hear the good news. God is faithful. The Apostle Paul. Later he wound up in that place that he never expected to be. It was prison. It was a place he never hoped to be. A place he never planned to be. Prison. And in that prison, he wrote a letter to that church that, well, he started from Troas. He wrote a letter to that church in Philippi, Philippians 4.19. And in order to encourage and to build up, well, that church and this church too, he says, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. His riches, they're far beyond what we plan they're far beyond what we expect. They're far beyond what we'd hope for. And my invitation this morning is that you don't let God's plan be determined by your expectation, by your hope. You don't let God's plan be limited by your power. That God has much more for you than that. And you may be in that, that place where you feel defeated. That place. That place where you never hoped to be. That place you never thought you'd be. Know that God is faithful. And His strength it's available to you today. Pray with me. Jesus, it's your strength. It's your riches. It's your spirit. That's alive today, working in and through us. You've, you've given us your strength. You've given us your power. Lord, give us grace enough to receive it. Grace enough to pick it up. Grace enough to live in your spirit, in your spirit to live in and through us.
So often it is, we, we've, we've narrowed our thinking, we've narrowed our lives to, to what we can see, what we think, and what we've planned, and what we expect, and what, what we hope. And this is never the narrow life, the limited life that, that you desire from us. The life, the life that you rose to give us is a life that's called abundant, and it's called eternal never limited by our temporal thinking, our narrow thinking, our defeated thinking. Breathe on us this day that we know that, Lord, you are faithful and that you will supply all our needs according to your riches and glory. Not one day, but this day. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi. Thank you for joining us. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image, and what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us, is an our, when God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image, he made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.